one thing. Sure we hear what the Lord has to say. Amen. 
Second Samuel chapter number 12. Second Samuel chapter 12. And we in there say amen. Amen. I'm going to just for time's sake. Start at verse number one. Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord sent Nathan. I'll tell you what, let me back up. I want to look at Verse 26 of 2 Samuel chapter 11. I want to pick up with that first. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 26. And when, the, and when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was passed, David sent and fetched her to his house. And she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came to him, and he said to him, There were two men in one city, the one rich, the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb, which he had brought bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and his children. Ate his own meat, drank from his cup, lay in his bosom, was unto him as a daughter. There came a traveler unto the rich man, spared to take of his own flock, of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man, but took the poor man's land, dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, this man that hath done this shall surely die. Mm. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he hath done this thing, and because he had no pity. And David said to, excuse me, Nathan said to David, you are the man. Wow. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king of Israel. I delivered you out of the hand of Saul, gave you your master's house. Your master's wives into your bosom gave you the house of Israel, Judah. If it had been too little, I would have given you much more. Why have you done this despicable thing? Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do this evil in his sight? You killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, took his wife to be your wife, slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me, taking the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house. I will take your wives before your own eyes, give them to your neighbor. He shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. You did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. David said to David, Nathan said to David, the Lord has also put away your sin, and you shall not die. How be it? Because this deed you have done, you have given great occasion by the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child that is born unto you shall surely die. I want to go to verse 13 again. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. You may be seated. I want to pin a simple title to this text. Lord, work on me. Lord, work on me. Lord, work on me. Now, brothers and sisters, before we get immediately into the text, let us take a few moments to recount or to recall the familiar episode that led up to this point in the first place. If you go back to 2 Samuel chapter 11, it is there that David, King David, got involved with Bathsheba, who was also Uriah's wife. 
Now the thing is, it wasn't enough that he got her pregnant. Excuse me, it wasn't enough that he slept with her, but he also got her pregnant. And because she was pregnant, David became anxious on the inside. Let me back up and say that again. Now it wasn't enough that he slept with her, but he also got her pregnant. Brothers and sisters, please understand this. David didn't plan to stay. He only planned to play. However, he got stuck. It's amazing how many people have only planned to stay. I was even planning to play, but ended up getting stuck. Now let's talk for a minute. I guarantee you, if the truth be told, and if you were to poll the men and women, not only in here, but in the world, but in here today, I guarantee you there's a few people in here that will, if they were honest, they could testify that the man or the woman you had your first child with that was not in your plan. To talk to me, somebody. Let me get closer to the mic. I guarantee you, if we were to be honest in here, let me just come down your road real quick. Women, if the truth be told, I guarantee that some of y'all that will be, if you are honest, you would testify that the man you had your first child with, See? you did not plan to have a child with that man. All right. okay. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. I guarantee you, the truth be told, you wish you did not have your child with that man. All right. Talk to me, somebody. You only planned to play. Come on, Doc. You didn't plan to stay, right. but you got stuck. All right. Talk to me, somebody. And there, there were some honest guys in here. I, I guarantee you some of us could say that, 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 that the woman you had your first child with, you didn't plan to have that child with that woman. You only planned to play, wow. not to stay, but you end up got stuck. Talk to me, somebody. Okay, let, 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 me, let me come with you directly. <laughs> to all the women in here that did not plan to have a child, your first child, with your child's daddy, put your hand high in the air. But it happened. You got stuck. <laughs> to all the men who ain't scared, if you didn't plan to have your first child with the woman you had your child with, put your head high in the air. But we played and we got stuck. Talk to me, somebody. Many times we make decisions based on a feeling. That's right. That's right. As opposed to the truth or the will of God. Amen. And a lot of times we found ourselves getting stuck. Even though we just plan to play and move on, talk to me, somebody. That's the thing with David. He just planned to have a good time for a few moments. And afterwards, send her on the way, and he go on with life as usual. But it just so happened when he slept with her that one time, she got pregnant. Can I tell y'all something? It only takes one time to talk to me, somebody. It only takes one time that that's if you are well, you got some good vitality. Let me put it like that. Now, if you are impotent, that's another story. But 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 but, but ordinarily, it only takes one time. Talk to me, somebody. It only takes one time. That that's why the truth of the matter is the, 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 the best contraceptive you will ever uh, uh, find for not having a baby is what? Abstinence. Talk to me, somebody. 
I, I need some real folk up in here. Look, 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 look. Let's talk real talk. Let's talk real talk. Let's talk real talk. Because at least half of us in here have had a child outside of wedlock. Talk to me, somebody. We didn't plan to have that child, but we had the child. Because all we had planned to do was play and move. Talk to me, somebody. Some of us just plan to stick and move, but we got stuck. <laughs> talk, talk to me, some. Look, 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 look. Do I need to call out some of y'all's names in here? Or, or is it that you want to forget that? Is that what it is? You want to forget it and move on? Yeah. Well, it's too late now. <laughs> This plan to stick and move. Yeah. Yeah. But the sad thing is, he got stuck. Now, uh, Bathsheba is pregnant. Amen. She's pregnant. And because she is pregnant, David has become anxious on the inside. Mm -hmm. But it's a simple you have to understand that David was not just their political leader. But he also served as their spiritual example. All right. Let me back up, say it again. He wasn't only the political leader for Israel, That's right. being the king, but he also served as their spiritual example. Amen. He wasn't just another man, say it. but David was indeed a man of God. As a matter of fact, God himself deemed David to be a man after his own heart. Talk to me, somebody. Furthermore, it was God himself that chose David to be Israel's new king in the first place. But now King David was in a dilemma. And he refused to take responsibility for his action. That's right. As a matter of fact, he even had Uriah taken from the battlefield. Come on now. Come on. With hopes that Uriah would go home, That's right. sleep with his wife Bathsheba, That's right. and become convinced that his wife baby was his own child. That's right. That's right. Sisters, please understand, David. He's in a place now where he's trying to cover up his tracks. Right. Anybody ever tried to cover up your tracks before besides me? Talk back to me, somebody. I need all y'all to just, 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 just talk, talk real to me right now. I know some of y'all want to hide it. I know you want folks to know your business. I ain't telling you to expose your stuff, but I just need you to be honest with yourself. Amen. All of us in here have tried to cover up some stuff. To talk to me, somebody. Lord, don't strike him down. Don't, 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 don't strike him down. Don't, don't strike him down. Don't, don't do it today, God. Don't do it today. But all of us in here have tried to cover up some stuff. Amen. Amen. But the thing is, the plan that David conspired did not work. So in his desperation, he comes up with another plan. This time he will go so low as to have Uriah killed on the battlefield. The Bible lets us know that David wrote a letter to Joab, the army's captain, describing his plans concerning Uriah. And the trick part about it is David sealed the letter concerning Uriah and used Uriah to give the letter to Joab. Please understand again, now you need to hear me clearly. Again, David now writes a letter mm -hmm. to Joab. And on the letter, he tells Joab what to do. Uh, he wanted Uriah to be killed in battle. So what David does, instead of David sending the letter to Joab by somebody else, he gives the letter to Uriah yes, to give to Joab. That's right, he sure so now you have Uriah. Carrying his own death sentence. 
and did not even know it. How cold can a person be? Someone today would even question how then could this man be a God of the, a man of the God's own heart to do something like this? Well, can I tell y'all something? Good people do bad things sometimes. Yeah. Let, let's get this thing right up in here. Yeah. Don't care how good you are, you've done some bad in your life. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't care how, how, how clean you think you are, you have done some unclean things in your life. Story, you will see 
it was not Bathsheba that made the decision to go to David. It was David that made the decision to go get Bathsheba and bring Bathsheba to his house. So what is she supposed to do when the king sent somebody to pick her up? Tell you something. You don't have to look for trouble. Sometimes trouble will look for you. Is there anybody here that knows what I'm talking about? Have you ever been minding your own business? And then somehow trouble came to where you were. I need some help up in here. Is there anybody here that you ever found yourself in a place where trouble came to where you were? Somebody would say, well, she shouldn't have been on the top of the roof bathing in the first place. No, no, no. She had the right to bathe whenever she wanted to bathe. Talk to me, somebody. You're right. David should have been on the battlefield in the first place. But he lagged behind. Walking on the top of his castle, on the rooftop of his top of the castle, and looking around, and he saw somebody. That caught his eye. Uh -huh. Can I tell y'all something? Uh -huh. For David to do what he did, well. what he saw was very pleasing to his eye. Right. Nothing was sagging, everything firm <laughs> and in place. Right. Talk back to me, men. Right. Everything looking good. Yeah. I can imagine the longer he stands. The longer deep salivated. Talk back to me, somebody. As he stood there and something caught his eye. He saw the water glistening on her body. From the sun shining. Is that anybody here that knows I'm talking about? Have you ever seen water glisten on a naked woman's body? You can imagine what was going on in David's mind. I got to get that. I got to get that. I got to. I got to. Talk to me, somebody. At least I got one deacon over here that ain't scared. That knows what I'm talking about. The rest of y'all, just keep your mouth closed. Because I'm telling you, please, you got to understand, she was minding her own business. And here he comes. He sent for people to get her and bring her to him. He's the king. What was she supposed to do? So now that her husband is mourning, I mean, now that her husband is dead, now she's mourning. Now, I'm quite sure she enjoyed that moment with the king. Quite sure she did. But that didn't change the fact that her husband was now dead. I'm quite sure she enjoyed that moment with the king, but that didn't change the fact that she still loved her husband. Talk to me, somebody. So, now she's mourning. Her husband is dead. Because keep in mind now, David got what he got and he sent her away. That's right. There's no guarantee that he was going to call her or call for her to come back. Right. So now she's at a place. What do I do now? Mm. All she really could hold on to was the fact that she still had Uriah. Right. But now Uriah is dead. Well. All of these are income. Is dead. Mm -hmm. The one that loved her unconditionally, he's dead. Mm, he's dead. The one that kept her company when he was at home, she, he's now dead. Amen. Yeah. Now she's mourning. Brothers and sisters, after the mourning period was over, well, the text says that David. Sent for Bathsheba. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, it says when morning was passed, David sent and 
fetched her to his house. That's what the text says. And she became his wife. And then the text says, eventually she gave birth to the child that was in her womb. Amen. Which was a little boy. Brothers and sisters, in David's desperation, he did some dastardly things. It was one thing for him to sleep well. But things went from bad to worse when his desperation led him to become diabolical. Detestable, despicable by having Uriah, an innocent man, killed. And no fault of his own. I tell you some brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. David had become so encapsulated with himself. He had become so encapsulated with protecting his image. So encapsulated with looking good in the eyes of the people that he allowed desire and desperation to cause him to do things that made him look bad in the eyes of God. Amen. Thank you so brothers and sisters. Just because you look good in the eyes of people doesn't mean that you look good in the eyes of God. Uh, you gotta understand that God does not accept everything that man accepts. God does not go along with everything that man goes along with. God does not agree with everything that man agrees with. God does not call holy what man calls holy. You we have to understand, please understand, God doesn't call holy what we call holy. We must call holy what Same sex well, a wedding in holy matrimony. All right now. No That's not holy. No we must call holy what God calls holy. Amen. Amen. And not the other way around. Mm-hmm. So, brothers and sisters, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 27 says, But the thing that David had done. Displeased the Lord. Brothers and sisters, hear me again. Just because your people are okay, well, doesn't mean that God is okay. That's right. Just because your folk go along with it, doesn't mean that God goes along with it. So there comes a time when you got to make up in your mind who are you trying to please? Whose approval means the most unto you? Are you more concerned about uh, getting people's approval or about getting God's approval? So, brothers and sisters, there's no debate about it. Well, David was wrong. How many know that David was wrong? Amen. It's not a trick question. If you know David was wrong, put your hand high in that. No ifs, no hands, or no buts about it. But before you condemn David, please understand, yes, you must call sin what it is. Amen. But before you condemn the person, hear this now, you condemn the sin. But before you condemn the person, hear this now, before you condemn David, I'm going ask you this question. How many in here have ever found yourselves in a situation that you did not know how to get out of. Anybody ever been there before? And because of anxiety, of frustration, you became desperate to find a way out by any means necessary. Even if it meant compromising your integrity. Talk to me somebody. 
whether it was in the workplace, uh-huh. in a relationship, in a business venture, whoever it was, yeah. you were stuck between a rock and a hard place. And time was running out. Well, How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Amen. And while you were in that place, you found yourself doing the unthinkable. Something you never imagined yourself doing. What happened was your desperation caused you to do something dastardly. Things just some kind of dastardly thing just to get unstuck from a sticky situation. So please understand. Think about it for a minute. When you think about things you've been in, well, that were hard to get out, get out of, and you didn't know what to do, mm-hmm. desperation caused you to do some things that were against what you believed. Right. Caused you to compromise your integrity. Amen. Caused you to say or do some things all for the sake of getting unstuck from a sticky situation. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. Even though you may have escaped from the situation, well. yet the truth is you did not escape from the judgment of God because the choices you made were foolish and out of the will of God. Amen. Amen. It's, just, it's amazing what we do when we're desperate. Yeah. It's amazing the decisions that we make when we are desperate. Amen. When we are trying desperately to get out of something. It's amazing of the decisions that we make, the choices that we make. Sometimes we don't think about the consequences, we just want to get out in a hurry. Sometimes we don't care who it hurts, we just want to get out in a hurry. Sometimes we don't care how it makes us look, we just want to get out in a hurry. Sometimes we don't even think about how uh, somebody else is going to be uh, affected by it. We just want to get out in a hurry. We don't care about compromising our integrity. We just want to get out in a hurry. Sometimes desperation calls us to make some poor decisions. We get so encapsulated with us, so encapsulated with our image, so encapsulated by what other people think and feel mm. that whatever it takes to get free from that situation, uh-huh. we do it. Think about how many times you compromise your integrity just to get loose from a sticky situation. Well. <clears throat> Things you did that you didn't think you would ever do, right. but you were desperate. You found yourself on the other side of pain. Well, amen. Because now you have to deal with the judgment of God. That's right. Can I tell you something? Being on the other side of pain is no joke. Well, amen. Especially when we have to deal with the judgment of God. Yes, sir. Uh, brothers and sisters, can I tell you, can't nobody punish you like the Lord can punish you. Can't nobody give you a whipping like the Lord can give you a whipping. I don't care how many times your mama break the switch, it still won't hurt as bad as the whipping that God gives you. Is there anybody here that knows what I'm talking about? Maybe some of y'all ain't never been whipped before, but I come to tell you today that even your mama can whip you like, like God can whip you. Your, your You feel it down to the depths of your soul. Yeah, yeah. You feel it in the core of your very being. Yeah, yeah. God, he wants us to feel it. Yeah, yeah. Feel it so much that it produces a change on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. So sisters, please understand, God was not pleased. Well, the text says, the Lord sent Nathan the prophet to David. Uh-huh. Told him to 
words that we read to you earlier, he said there were two men in one city. One was rich and the other was poor. The rich man had an abundance of flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb or one little female lamb. Amen. What he had bought and nourished up. The lamb grew up together with the poor man mm -hmm. and with his children. Right. The lamb ate of the man's own food, drank from the man's own cup, lay in the man's own bosom. The lamb was like a daughter to the poor man. But then there came a traveler unto the rich man. But the rich man refused to take from his own flock and herd to prepare a meal for the wayfaring man that came unto him. But instead, the rich man took the poor man's only little lamb, good God Almighty, and prepared it for the wayfaring man, good God Almighty, to the only little lamb that the poor man had. It's not a Everybody is going to see it. That's right. 
for you did it secretly. Mm. But I will do this thing before all Israel That's right. and before the sun. But the sisters, after David heard what the Lord had to say, well. David was convicted in his heart. Yeah. Yeah. And he said these words, I have sinned against the Lord. Well. But watch this. But before his confession, he had to see the error of his own way. That's right. That's right. And watch this now. But before he saw his own error, he only saw an error in somebody else. All right, now. All right. Let me back it up, say it again. Before his confession, he had to see the error of his own way. But before he saw his own error, he only saw an error in somebody else. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you, that's how it is today. Well, not only in the world, but also in the church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So many folk are quick to point out somebody else's shortcomings, but never take time to examine themselves. Amen. I wish I had some help up in here. Yes, can I tell you something? It is a truth that David was anointed and he was appointed. Yeah. But he was still operating in error. Yeah. Let's say it again. He was anointed and he was appointed. Uh -huh. But he was still operating in error. That's right. Yeah. Can I tell you something? The anointing of God does not excuse you from accountability. Amen. Amen. Are y'all hearing me in here? I don't care how anointed you are. You're, they, they are not your anointed, but the anointed of God does not excuse you from accountability. Amen. The anointed does not excuse you from responsibility. Right. Are y'all hearing me in here? The anointing does not excuse you from being rebuked and reprimanded. Amen. Amen. Well, sisters, until you let the Lord deal with you. That's right. Until you allow him to work on you. Yeah. Until you allow him to fix you. Yeah. Yeah. You will never be the you he wants you to be. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Until you allow the Lord to deal with you. Until you allow him to work on you. Yeah. Until you allow him to fix you. You will never be the you that he wants you to be. All right. You know what I found out? Some people spend so much time dissecting other people that they don't realize how dysfunctional they are themselves. Let me back it up and say it again. Some people spend so much time dissecting other people that they don't know how dysfunctional they are themselves. I'm talking to the pews and the pulpit. Yes, you call sin what it is. But at the end of the day, what gives you a right to dissect anybody without first looking at yourself? Talk back to me, somebody. I know why some of y'all are in the same Because some of y'all are trying to dissect me right now. I'll talk back to me, somebody. But can I tell you something? If you ever just take a few moments to look in the mirror, I guarantee you'll see something out of place. Talk back to me, somebody. Got a level of dysfunctionalism inside of us. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Some of y'all got a dysfunctional tongue. Well. Do I need to go in depth and detail? <laughs> Some of y'all got a dysfunctional tongue. Yeah. Every third word that comes out of your mouth is a curse word. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. I know why. I, yeah, yeah, I know you're quiet right now. We don't hear you cussing now. No, no, but what I guarantee you, after the benediction of the back up, some of y'all before the benediction, I guarantee you some will step up. Talk back to me, somebody. Uh -huh. Y'all must be able to talk to up here. There are so many folks that have dysfunctional tongue. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
on a couple say amen. I heard two of y'all. God, if you want to strike him, it's on you. I ain't talking about you that slip up every blue moon and every nine. I ain't talking about y'all. Well, I'm talking about y'all every third and fourth word. <laughs> Talk to me, somebody. Some of y'all got dysfunctional tongues. Yeah, yeah. You're always cutting folk down. Amen. Always talking about them bad behind their backs. Well, Talk to me, somebody. But you don't realize that they might not be hearing you, but the Lord is listening to everything that's come out of your mouth. And can I tell you something? You will be judged by everything that comes out of our mouth because with our words we shall be condemned as well as justified. That's right. Sisters, right. so many people spend so much time just dissecting other people. Well, they don't realize how dysfunctional they are themselves. Amen. Again, some have dysfunctional tongues. Yeah. If it ain't profanity, again, it's gossip. Well, it's slandering. Uh -huh. Talk back to me, somebody. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Some of you have dysfunctional attitudes. Well, to talk to me, somebody. You get an attitude about everything. To talk, talk to me, somebody. Some of y'all are so dysfunctional that you don't want to listen to anybody. You don't want to obey anybody. You don't want to submit to anybody. You think you know everything. Can't nobody tell you anything. You want to do everything in your way because you think that everything revolves around you. But can I tell you something? If you die today, the world is going to keep on spinning. I'm going to say it again. If you die today, the world is going to keep on spinning. And can I tell you something else? If you die today, by next week, somebody else is going to be sleeping in your bed. We're back in Shut up, or I got to go. All right. I can't deal with all that gossip. I can't deal with that slander. I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. I can't. I, I, I cram to understand how, how some of y'all can just sit there and listen to all that gossip and slander. Whether it's on your family, folk, your friends. I, I can't. I, I cram to understand how you can just sit there. Just as worse as they are. Okay, can I tell you something? It's not just the one that opens his or her mouth. It's also the one that sits there and listens. To talk to me, somebody, you that just sit there and listen, you are giving them an audience and that's why they keep on saying what they're saying. So you're just as worse. You're 
just his words. Amen. Let the audience say amen. Amen. As I close, I'm going to say these things and I'm done. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse number 1, He said, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged as well. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why do you behold the moat that is in your brother's eye? But consider not the beam that is in your own eye. In other words, how in the world can you complain about the speck in your brother or sister's eye? But you ignore the plank that's in your own eye. Do y'all know how big a plank is? He said, how will you say to your brother, let me pull that little speck out of your eye? <laughs> and yet there's a plank in your own eye. Oh, the plank God folks say amen. <laughs> well, you know who I'm talking to. <laughs> you hypocrite. First, cast the plank out of your own eye. And then you can clearly cast out the speck out of your brother or sister's eye. Amen. No, you would prank eyes. Can't have see. Stumbling everywhere. I ain't talking about glaucoma. I'm talking about pranks in your eye. Can't you see how bad off you are? Always worried about somebody else. He said, first take the plank out of your own eye. And you got nerve to talk about the speck in my eye. When you got the big old plank in your eye, you got the nerve to talk about the little stuff I'm dealing with and the little the, 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 the shortcomings I have when you living like a, a joke to yourself. Hello, somebody. You got the nerve to go and have a conversation about this person when the truth of the matter is you are just as worse or even worse than that person. You got the nerve to talk about that person that drinks a 12 pack every, every week when you got some, some, some Kavasi and, and you got some Hennessy and, and you got some Crown Royal and you got some Parmesan and you got some, you got some, some, some wild, wild turkey. You got all All the plank eyed folks say amen. <laughs> Talk to me, somebody. How can you judge somebody else? That's right. That's right. You got no room to judge. Text said, in other words, the standard you set for others, right. God's going to set that same standard for you. The measuring stick you use on other people, God's going to use you use that same measuring stick on you. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. Well, y'all quiet now. Yeah. I know what it is to break and to close your mind. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Sisters, take a hard look in the mirror. Uh -huh. If you take a hard look in the mirror, you will see just how dysfunctional you are yourself. You will see that you need just as much and maybe even more help than the next person. Right. As one songwriter said, check yourself yeah. before you wreck yourself. Right. Matter of yeah. fact, that is your name's a neighbor. neighbor. No, no, you like you said, like you scared, say it like you ain't scared. It's a neighbor. neighbor. You better check yourself you before you wreck yourself you with that plank in your eye. your question, brothers and sisters. When was the last time you asked the Lord to work on you? Well, you asked the God to work on everybody else. Mm -hmm. You asked him to fix everybody else. That's right. 
When the last time you asked him to fix you? Lord, fix my child. Lord, fix my husband. Lord, fix my brother. Lord, fix my co-worker. Lord, fix my boss. Lord, fix my pastor. When the last time you said, Lord, fix me. When the last time you said, Lord, it's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Hallelujah. In the house. Is there anybody here that needs the Lord to fix you? All of us need him to fix us. So I said the proper question is, how many want the Lord to fix you? Not your question. How many of y'all within the last few weeks have asked the Lord to work on somebody? How many of y'all have asked the Lord to either work on somebody or fix somebody or, or change somebody? If you if you pray that prayer for somebody else, put your hand high there. All those prayers, how many times have you said, Lord, work on me? Lord, fix me. What, what am I doing to contribute to the problem? What, what, what am I doing to make things the way that they are? Can I tell y'all something? I have found this out some years ago. I had this woman that we used to work together and wonderful, 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 wonderful woman. But every time we get all work, or sometimes during the workshop, she would always complain. Mm. Complain about how she always had it from job to job to job. But since I had found, I, I found out if every job you go to, you keep going through the same thing. Well, it's an indication that it's not the job. It is you talk to me, somebody. Talk back to me, somebody. I found out that if for some reason you keep attracting the wrong man, well, well it could be because you got the wrong thing on the inside of you. Right. You keep attracting the wrong kind of the wrong kind of woman. It's because you got the wrong thing on the inside of you. Talk to me, somebody. Because it ain't everybody else's fault all the time. Talk to me, somebody. Right. And let me back it up and say, it's not everybody else's fault all the time. Right. Hello, somebody. Right. Lord, work on me. That's right. Work on me. What am I doing that I should not be doing? Yeah. Or what am I not doing that I should be doing? Right. Lord, show me me. Lord, work on me. Amen. Lord, 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 matter of fact, if you make me better, well, I may be a better contributor to the situation. I may help the situation if you just make me better. That's right. Matter of fact, why are you asking God to fix them in the first place? Uh -oh. Is it for their benefit or for your benefit? Talk to me, somebody. The last time you said, Lord, fix me. Amen. Maybe they act the way they act because I am the way that I am. Amen. Maybe they act the way that I act because of, of the things I say. Uh -huh. Maybe they act the way they act because of how I care of myself and how I conduct myself. Maybe it is it's me well. that's standing in the need of prayer. Yeah. Lord, work on me. Yeah. Work on my mouth. How many of y'all need the Lord to work on your mind? Put your hand high in the air. I can call out to y'all right now. Lord, work on my mind. Lord, work on my mind. Work on my thoughts, God. Work on my faith level, God. God, work, work on my on, on, on what I believe and how I believe it. Work on my spirituality. Work on my mentality. Work on my emotions. Work on my work ethic. Work on work on me, God. Work on me, work on me. Yeah. So that I can be better. That's right. Because I believe that if I am better, well, then I'll be better for you. Uh -huh. And I'll be better for your people. Right. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Brothers and sisters, for the last time you had the Lord to shine his light on you and search you 
through and through. Well. Brothers and sisters, it wasn't until David heard what the Lord had to say mm -hmm. that condition, that conviction came upon him. Uh -huh. And when conviction came upon him, he penned those famous words in Psalm 51. When conviction came on him, it is in Psalm 51 that he penned these famous words. When he was able to see the error of his own way. When he was able to see how dysfunctional he really was himself. When he was able to see that he was a contributor to the problem. When he was able to see that it was him that was operating out of order. Well, he was anointed, but he was still out of order. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He was anointed, but he was still operating in somebody else's lane. Yeah. He was anointed, but he was still operating in a way that displeased God. He was anointed, but he was still dysfunctional. Yes. Yeah. You can be anointed. And yet still be dysfunctional. Yeah. You, you can be anointed and yet still be dysfunctional. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, he said these words as I close. He said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. Well, According unto the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. He said, wash me thoroughly and thoroughly from my iniquity. He said, cleanse me from my sin. Watch this. He said, for I acknowledge my transgressions. Well, watch this. Now, he said, I acknowledge where I went wrong. Hallelujah. He said, I acknowledge what I did wrong. He, he said, I acknowledge that I, I was at fault. I, I acknowledge that I was operating in error. I, I acknowledge that I was going down the wrong road. I acknowledge that I said some things I should have said. I Acknowledge that I did some things I should have done. I acknowledge that I connected to some folk I should have connected with. I acknowledge God that I made the wrong decision. I acknowledge God that I made some poor choices. I acknowledge God that I went wrong. Good God Almighty. I acknowledge God that it's nobody's fault but mine. Is there anybody here? Sins. Why not all my iniquity? 
how much I can and can't take. Lord, you know my tolerance now. Lord, you know my level of patience. Work on me. Lord, you know my level of faith. Work on me. Work on me. Don't let me be fault finding. Don't let me put me on the speck. This is my, this is our. God help me to see the plank in my eye. To see just how dysfunctional I really am. Because I believe when I get better, I can make I can help to make people around me better. I can be better for you. So two things that we're going to be 